Hello friends, this video on reproduction in animals part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will discuss about asexual reproduction in detail. So we will see what are the various modes of asexual reproduction and how exactly it happens. So let us quickly have uh, a recap of whatever we have learned about asexual reproduction. So let us talk about asexual reproduction. As discussed, it is that mode of reproduction in which new individuals are formed from a single parent. So we really do not need distinct sexes like male and female. So just one organism can give rise to new organisms. New individuals are identical to parent. When I say identical, they are physically identical, they are genetically identical. So in every way, they are exact clones. They are exact copy of their parents. Faster mode of reproduction. So when you compare asexual reproduction with sexual reproduction, you will see that this one is a faster mode of reproduction. That is, in a lesser amount of time, more organisms are produced by asexual reproduction. Now, some of the organisms where asexual reproduction is commonly seen is euglena, as you can see here. They are mostly, unis, mostly unicellular organisms reproduce asexually. So, some examples are euglena, amoeba. These are some of the unicellular protists. Uh, it is also seen in hydra, as you can see here. Hydra, then planaria, the tape forms. So in these organisms, so these are multicellular organisms. If you talk about hydra, planaria or tape forms, they are all multicellular, but then they are lower animals. They are animals with comparatively simpler body organization. It is also seen in the simplest form of unicellular organisms, that is bacteria. Bacteria also divide asexually. Not only this, it is also seen in some plants like onion, potato, rose. In some of these plants also asexual reproduction is quite common. So as you can see here, so these are the plants where you see asexual reproduction. Now some plants are there which reproduce both sexually as well as asexually. So now let us talk about the various types of asexual reproduction. How, what are the various ways by which an organism can reproduce asexually? Now some of the important types are fission, budding, regeneration, fragmentation, spore formation and vegetative propagation. So these are the common types of asexual reproduction. So now here in this lesson we are not going to talk about each of these in detail. However, few of these we will definitely discuss like fission, budding, regeneration, fragmentation. So we will discuss these now. Rest of them will be discussed in your higher classes. So let us talk about fission. So, fission is a process in which an organism splits into two or more new individuals. Fission, the word fission means splitting or to split. That is to separate into two parts. So, this is so simple that you really don't need male, female, any sexual intercourse, nothing is required. The organism will itself get split into two halves and that's how two new organisms will be formed. So it is that simple. The concept is that simple. Now the question is, how will this splitting occur? Now the way that organism is going to split, that can happen in a number of ways. Now, depending upon into how many halves an organism splits, there are two types of fission. First is binary fission. The second one is multiple fission. So binary, the word binary means two and multiple means many. So binary fission is that type of fission in which one organism will split into two new organisms. Multiple fission is that type of fission where one organism will split into many organisms more than two organisms. So that is how we classify the types of fission. Now again, as I was telling that how exactly the splitting will happen, that again depends. Now the splitting can happen along a plane. It can also happen along a specific plane. It can happen that along that particular plane. I mean, let us suppose if this is the organism. 
Now, how will this organism split? There can be various number of ways. It can split like this into two halves. It can split like this along this axis into two halves. It can split along this axis into two halves. So, there are many different ways by which the organism can separate into two halves or more than two halves. So, now based on how the organism is splitting into how many parts it is splitting, the subdivision of fission has been done. So, mostly fission is seen in unicellular organisms. So, as I was telling that in fact asexual reproduction is more common in unicellular organisms. Now, fission out of this is again common in unicellular organisms. So, let us see how exactly it happens. So, let us first talk about binary fission. So, in binary fission, two new individuals are formed. So, here the splitting happens in such a way that two exactly equal halves are formed. Because we have studied that in asexual reproduction, the new organisms have to be exactly identical to the parents. So, that's why it gets divided into two exactly equal halves. However, the splitting can happen at along any plane. So, if this is your organism, so for example, I'm considering amoeba. So, now the splitting can happen along this plane. It can also happen along this plane. It can happen along this plane. So, it can happen across any plane, but it has to divide into two equal halves. So, when we talk about amoeba. But there are certain other organisms where binary fission takes place, but the splitting happens across a specific plane. So let us see them as well. So in binary fission, what happens is the nucleus divides only once. Now why the nucleus divides? Now when we say that the organism divides into two halves, now any organism, let us consider this amoeba, or let us consider, amoeba is unicellular, so it is made up of one cell. Now this cell also has a nucleus, so let us suppose this is the nucleus of the cell. Now when this amoeba is going to divide into two amoeba, so both these amoeba will need nucleus. So that means this one nucleus will actually have to produce two nucleus. So the nucleus needs to divide. Now here since the organism is dividing it, getting divided into two halves, so the, if the nucleus divides only once, that is enough. So organisms which undergo binary fission, some of the examples are unicellular animals like amoeba, paramecium, euglena, bacteria. So these are some of the examples of organisms which undergo binary fission. Now out of these organisms, again, different organisms split in different ways to produce two equal halves. For example, if we consider the example of amoeba. So here we see that the splitting can happen across any plane. So anyways, amoeba doesn't have a fixed shape as such. So here you can see this is amoeba. So if you look at how splitting happens in amoeba, amoeba itself doesn't have a specific shape. So the splitting can happen across any plane. It can happen along this plane. It can happen along this plane. It can happen along this plane. Any plane is fine. So what actually happens is initially, the nucleus first expands and then it breaks into two halves. So you see here, this is the nucleus. So first of all, the nucleus has to split to form two nuclei. So here you see two nuclei have been formed. Now as soon as the nucleus splits to form two nuclei, then gradually the two cells get separated and that's how you get two new two daughter cells. So these are the two daughter cells. Now in this case, the parent stops to exist. The parent doesn't exist anymore. The parent breaks to form two daughter cells. And these two daughter cells are exactly identical to the parent. So here the first step is, the first step of division is the nucleus division. That is the nucleus divides first and then it is followed by the division of the cytoplasm. After that the cytoplasm divides. So that's how binary fission takes place in amoeba. Now if you take the example of euglena. So this is euglena. So in euglena, we will see that the splitting has to take place only along a specific plane. It just can't happen along any plane. Or if you take the example of Lishmania, 
So Lishmania is another example. So here, let me take the example of Lishmania. So this is, what is Lishmania? This is again, uh, it, it also has a web-like structure which helps in its locomotion. So this is also a protozoa. So this is Lishmania. So Lishmania is again a protozoa which is more popular for causing a disease called Kala Azar. So that's why it is famous. So this is how it looks like and here also if you see this is how it is and it divides to form and it gradually divides to form two halves. So you see here, here you have just one nucleus and then the nuclei divides into two halves and then along this plane the division has to take place. So every time the splitting has to take place along this specific plane. So it cannot happen that okay it got split like this. So that is not possible. So in some organisms the binary fission has to take place in such a way that the splitting happens across a particular plane. So this, this binary fission happens under favorable conditions. It is not that the organism can split anytime it wants and each split forms an independent daughter cell. So from this we see that the daughter cells which are formed they are exactly, exactly identical to the parents. The parents do not exist anymore because the parents got divided to form two new daughter cells. But at the same time, the process is quite fast. Now we will talk about multiple fission. So multiple fission, the concept is going to be the same. Just that in this case, instead of two, you get many daughter cells. So here the nucleus divides repeatedly. So it is not just once, but it keeps on dividing continuously. Multiple fission is a process which takes place under unfavorable conditions. So that is one difference between binary fission and multiple fission. Binary fission takes place under favorable conditions, but multiple fission takes place under unfavorable conditions. So we will see how it takes place under unfavorable conditions. Now what happens is whenever unfavorable conditions come, for protection against such conditions, a protective covering is formed over the cell. So the cell gets covered with a structure and this structure which is formed during unfavorable conditions is called cyst. So during unfavorable conditions, cyst formation takes place. So your cell gets covered with a protective layer. Now what happens inside the cyst? Inside the cyst, the nucleus keeps on dividing multiple number of times. So what happens? So multiple nuclei are formed. So let us suppose if this is your nucleus, it divides once, it forms two. Again it divides, it forms four. Again it divides, it forms more. So that's how it goes on. So when the nucleus keeps on dividing continuously, multiple number of nuclei are formed inside. Now, but the cyst formation will remain as long as the favorable conditions do not come back. Now, once the favorable conditions come back, what happens? All those multiple nuclei are released and each of those nuclei will give rise to a new daughter cell. So this happens in amoeba, plasmodium, many algae, it, this kind of fission is seen. So let us take the example of plasmodium. What is plasmodium? It is more popularly known for causing malaria. So plasmodium is the malarial parasite. So this is also a protozoa. So let us see how this process happens. So this is how it is. Let us suppose this is the nucleus. So inside you have the structure that is the cell. Inside the cell you have the green colored structure which is the nucleus. Now during unfavorable condition what happens? A cyst is formed. So this is the cyst which is formed during unfavorable conditions. Now what happens? As long as the unfavorable condition remains, the cyst also remains. And inside this nucleus, so here this represents the nucleus. So this nucleus continuously keep on dividing and it forms so many nuclei. So multiple nuclei are formed inside. But now the conditions are unfavorable, so the cyst is still there. Now as soon as favorable conditions come back, what happens? The cyst disappear. So this happens under favorable conditions. When favorable conditions come back, all these nuclei are released and each of these nuclei will give rise to a new cell. So basically you started with one cell and you later came up with multiple cells. 
So this is the cyst which is formed during unfavorable conditions. So this type of reproduction happens only during unfavorable condition. So you can see that organisms, some organisms, they uh, reproduce by binding fission during favorable conditions. Some organisms reproduce by multiple fission during unfavorable conditions. So there are organisms where both binary and multiple fission takes place. For example, amoeba. So in amoeba, binary fission also takes place, multiple fission also takes place. So this was all about fission. So here also if you see each of these daughter cells which are produced, they are all identical to the parent cell. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.